Hello, welcome to episode 212 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 2nd of June. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some crochet, some sewing, a gadget, which is a very inexpensive gadget that I'm very excited about. <laughs> doesn't take much does it i have a question for the ask me anything section i have some information on my shop and then i have a little appearance from jensen in a knitted item at the end of the podcast and both the ask me anything section and the jensen's section is has got a bit of knitting in so even though i've only shown one project in the knitting section there'll be more knitting coming later so there are a couple of make-alongs over in the Ravelry group and also on Instagram if you want to join those. Details of those are in the description bar down below. But one is Craft 20 a Day and the other one's the Spring Shawl Along 2022. So details of that in the description bar down below. Right, so let's get on with the knitting, shall we? So I've got my triangulum blanket that I've been working on. So this is a pattern by me and it is basically triangles that you can use all your different little scraps out of or you could choose a colour scheme and then just keep knitting I don't know the same sort of six to ten colours so that you've got a nice um, blanket that's like perfectly matching but I'm using lots of leftover scraps and I've picked the colours that are more dual toned so that they go together out of my leftovers and I think that's a really good way of using up yarn. Each of these triangles takes about three grams of yarn. This is fingering weight yarn but the pattern's also written for DK as well so the triangles will be this about the same size but um, obviously less stitch count um, I've calculated it for the DK as well and DK will knit up a lot quicker but I have a lot of four ply scraps so I'm using those up um, but I'm picking the colour scheme as I go along so the pattern is written for DPN needles because it's really easy to sort of describe because the triangles have obviously got three sides and they're easy to um, to tell you how many stitches to put on each of the three needles but quite a few people have been asking me whether you can get on with circular needles as well so I've been having a go using circular needles and using magic loop um, for the little triangles and actually I really like it this way so I haven't put the instructions in the pattern yet for this but I will be adding it soon but all I'm doing is I've split the stitch count between two needles and then I've put a progress keeper at the beginning of the round and two stitch markers where the ends of the DPNs would be um, so that then you can follow along with the decrease of stitches as per the pattern. And I actually really like it and I'm thinking I might continue knitting it on Magic Loop actually. I think that it's it's really easy um, with the DPNs but I think when the blanket's getting a little bit heavier I'm finding that it's just a little bit more comfortable. Not loads different, I still find it fine with the DPNs but with you can do it equally as well with Magic Loop. I will be adding this instruction to the pattern of exactly what I've done here and after I've done a few more triangles using this method just so that um, if there's anything else I would suggest doing when using magic loop I will add that in a few weeks time. I'm also in the process of working out the pattern for the half of the equilateral triangle as well so that it fills in the gap. So when you've done sort of one side of the blanket if you've got if you do sort of the straight version the top and the bottom edges will be straight but the sides go in slightly like this which I quite like the effect of it but quite a lot of people wanted to sort of straighten it out so I'm in the process of writing the instructions for a half of this triangle so that it fills in the gaps nicely and you still get these lines going out from the sort of center points if that makes sense so it's not just filled in so that's how I've got on so far with my triangulum blanket. I was intending to do this the hexagonal version but because I'm writing the pattern for the straight edges I might actually do the straight version again um, but it is actually really fun to knit and it's also a good way of using up your scraps. I have got plans actually of doing some uh, sets of yarns so that you can actually have like a full set of 100 gram skeins so you can make the whole blanket in colours that really match if you want them to really match um, but I've got quite a number of uh, mini sets on the website if you're looking for yarns to do your triangular mint and I'll leave a link to the mini sets I've got in my shop um, and I try and do it so the whole 
all the yarns in the set sort of tone together nicely and if you wanted me to I'm quite happy to dye the the mini sets but on full skeins so if you do see a mini set that you want a set of full skeins instead to do the blanket with just drop me an email and I'll write you a custom listing and they're easy enough to dye up in full skeins rather than the minis quickly show you what the back of the blanket looks like um, once it's blocked it does go a little bit flatter but when you've just knitted it you do get a little bit of sort of sticking out but once it's blocked that that um that blocks out really nicely and flat so that is the only thing i've been knitting on this week because i've been obsessed with both crochet and hand sewing so on to my crochet section first and i've been working on my ziggy interrupted wrap and this is how I've got on with it so far. So last week I showed you that I'd done all the little squares for the bottom here and I've actually now joined them together and started to do the zigzag section. And I love how this is coming out. I absolutely love the colours. I don't think the camera picks up the purple as much as it is in real life. So this looks more like a burgundy and a beige on camera, but there's more of a tinge of purple in there that you can't quite see. I'll have to mess around with my white balance before the next week's podcast. So hopefully you'll be able to see the colour a bit better. Um, but there is more purple in all of these colours. I've just started using the darkest of the four colours. That one is a slightly lighter version. These two are actually the same colourway by Ducky Darlings and they're just on two different bases so this one looks a little bit darker. That's a real deep purple. This one's slightly lighter purple but still quite dark and then I've got this gorgeous sort of mid-tone purple and browns shades there and this one is from the Woolen Witch and that's Snail's Pace and then I've got this one here which is from the Camel's Yarn and that's called Love Letter. So there's the four colours that I'm using for the Ziggy Interrupted Wrap by Sandra Paul from the Cherry Heart Podcast. Now she does suggest using five skeins of yarn but it does say in the notes that you can actually achieve a full wrap with only four skeins so I'm risking it and doing four skeins because <laughs> I don't like to have too many leftovers and plus it's already difficult enough to get four skeins that go really well together from four well three different dyers um when I because I got the yarns from the uh, East Anglia Yarn Festival um so I thought four will be enough and I could always make it just slightly shorter so I'm really enjoying this actually it's quite addictive although the only trouble I have because this color is very dark to crochet this in the evening I'm finding it quite hard to see what I'm doing so I have to try and do it in the daytime um, which is more of a pain. <laughs> I've got a progress keeper there just holding my stitch so that it doesn't come unraveled. So I am using the the crochet hook size that the pattern suggests a three millimeter crochet hook and I am using my favorite crochet hook which is the Clover Amore and this is the three millimeter size obviously this is one still in the packet so you can still you can see what the packaging looks like um, but I do I have got one that I'm using as well but I do sell these in my shop so I thought I'd show you what they look like in the packaging they have got a lovely rubber grip and they're it's sort of in a triangle shape so that you can grip round the crochet hook really easy. And I found that when I have done bouts of lots of crochet, that that grip really, really helps. Much more comfortable than using like a metal crochet hook. And I did try the um, Knit Pro version that's got a spongy handle as well, but I did find those were a little bit better. So those are my favourites and I sell them in the shop. Um, but that's how I've got on and hopefully I can get like one of the panels completely finished before the next podcast but I'm not far off so I've got one two three and I'm on the fourth repeat of the zigzag up here um, and I just think there's a few more repeats until I've got another section of these little squares. Now I did say on last week's podcast I was a bit mm, don't know what colour to join those in because I was trying to join them in the in this colour here which is sort of the mid-tones in the middle and I found that actually um, if I joined them in this slightly darker colour it would blend in because in this colour here I've got some darker flecks anyway um, but if I was using this colour onto this yarn you could really see the difference so actually joining them together with this yarn worked out a little bit better I think 
and you can't see the joins as much and I just did a sewn join um, but Sandra did say about using a, a double crochet join if you wanted to which will mean you'll have like a ridge across the back of the work but I wanted to make something that looks as double-sided as possible so I have sewn them together. Once you've done this panel of squares you then keep doing backwards and forwards this this lovely zigzag pattern so you don't have to join anything until you get to the next squared section which is really good. So there we go that is my crochet for this week. So my next section is the sewing section and I've been a little bit obsessed with working on this. <laughs> So I did a class by a lady called Pam in our local sewing group and she does these penny rugs and beautiful designs. I did my own combination of her designs if that makes sense. So I've got some leaves and flowers around the outside and then I've got these two little hairs in the middle. So on last week's podcast I'd done most of the stitching but I hadn't finished all the stalks. I hadn't done the little whiskers of the rabbits I've added some of those in I've also stitched all the way around the outside in a grey which you can't see very well um, on camera but I have done the same blan blanket stitch all the way around to finish that center part off so I have finished this center panel now it's completely enclosed on the back which is really lovely um, so I've put that to one side and I've been working on these little hearts. So I've done about 12 of these now and I'm more or less halfway into making them and I've got two sort of colour schemes for the pink range of hearts to go round but I've also got some other green ones to do. So I've, so I've done all the pink ones and these ones need stitching now so I've done the two greens the opposite way around so we've got a smaller and a larger heart layered up so these need stitching so each of them when I've stitched them they've got the two different coloured um, pieces and then you've got this background piece as well so I've stitched round the centre of the pink round the outside of this beige and then I've gone round the grey as well so that's one of them I've got a good stack which I've done just over half so I've got all those ready um, but I need to do the green ones now. When these are finished, I'll have put them all the way around the outside. And I'm, I will be alternating the different designs. So those will go all the way around the outside with the different coloured hearts as well. So getting on nicely with those. And I'm finding I've been able to sit in the lounge while I'm watching Jensen while he's playing by himself for a little bit and do some of the hand stitching around these little hearts and it's quite a nice little bit of time. I can do a few minutes while he's playing nicely by himself until he decides he wants another drink or whatever. <laughs> and I'm now going to swiftly move on to the gadget section which is very much related to doing my sewing in the lounge while Jensen's playing, alone, playing away. So I was thinking that it'd be really nice to have a separate tray that I'd use just for my hand sewing stuff in the lounge that I can put to one side out of the way that is just for my stitching so that if I needed it for anything else I wouldn't have to shuck everything off it again. Um, so I had a look in B&M for a little tray to go on the sofa and I just found this amazing piece of gadgetry. <laughs> so it is a tiny little tray and you can see that I've just dumped all my little hearts in there. I've got my scissors and pins and the threads here ready to use and it's a nice little tray with an edge on and then I saw it does this. So it's got sprung legs on and you can put this over the edge of the arm of your chair which I thought oh that would be quite good you know just to lean there but then when I actually started using it I found that I could put it on my leg you can't really see right now but you can have that wedged on my leg because this is sprung it'll hold onto your leg and I can literally just have it onto one leg while I'm sewing so that I haven't sort of got to hold my legs sort of together so that the tray stays onto it that grips onto my leg brilliantly this is how it grips onto my leg I'm very excited so you just literally put it onto your leg and it is quite stable I was very surprised at how stable that is and I can just carry on with hand sewing and everything's sort of kept in by the edges of the tray how good is that I think I'm gonna have to make a little 
um, like a felt rug inside so that everything sort of grips instead of slipping on this surface and I can decorate it with some lovely little bits of applique I think in the same sort of style as this and you can see all the pieces that I've got ready um, for my penny rug. I'll just show you how it goes on to the side of the chair and that keeps it nice and sturdy as well so I'm so pleased about that and I hope you can get hold of one too but I find that really useful and actually when I want to take it off my leg and I want it to go somewhere that things aren't going to fall off if there isn't a table spare I can just put it onto the arm of the chair and that'll grip onto the arm of our chair and it's our arm the arms of our chairs are quite wide as well and I'm just quite surprised that it would fit but oh I'm so pleased with it and this is the packaging um, that it came in so you can see what it looks like um, and it was five pounds from B&M absolutely so pleased with this <laughs> I think for anybody who does sort of crafts that needs a surface to put anything on um, it's absolutely brilliant especially for sort of hand sewing and things if you've got a lot of stitch markers or if you're putting beading in knitting or anything like that I think it would be useful as well I don't think um, I necessarily trust it to put a whole glass of wine on with a long stem like that but actually I did put a cup of tea on it and it was fine which I'm quite surprised about I wouldn't be I wasn't thinking it was going to be that stable and even better it's quite stable on my leg as well absolutely brilliant <laughs> get very very excited about the tiniest little bargains and especially if they're gadgets so that is my gadget for this week and we're moving on to the ask me anything section so i had an email from julie and she was saying that she saw my great ambition mitts that i'd knitted for adam last week on the podcast which are these so these are from the synth slytherin house in harry potter and that's what house that Adam's in so he had to have Slytherin mittens and Julie was asking me do they do other patterns for the other houses in Harry Potter and absolutely they do they're it's they're all by Diana Waller there are all the houses so I will pop a picture up here of the other house mitts which are just like this but obviously in the right theme for each of the houses and I think they're gorgeous I'm very tempted to make some Gryffindor ones for me because I'm Gryffindor um and they're obviously Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff as well um so absolutely i will leave links to all four house mittens in the description bar down below and i definitely like it with the ribbon on because that looks just like the uniforms as well so even better so now we're on to my shop update section so i just wanted to remind everybody that i've got the june yarn clubs that's the mixed tape minis and the power ballad sets and also the summer holiday project bag and yarn sets those will the listings will be taken down on the 5th of june so you have just over this weekend to purchase them if you want to get hold of those the june yarn clubs as in the power ballads and the mixtape minis will be shipped on the 10th of june but the summer holiday project bag and yarn sets those will be shipped on the 30th of june um just to give me a little bit of time because obviously with it being bags they take a lot, a lot a lot longer to make and those are all made with um hand cut applique and free motion machined as well so these take me a little longer to do so that's all for my shop update this week um but now it's over to jensen so over to you jensen hello jensen what have you got on today you've got your little daily solo jumper on that nanny knitted for you so this is some gorgeous mr and mrs rabbit's yarn and i love this pattern it's a one year old size this particular one and he is only six months but i think it's a little bit big on him as yet but i think it looks okay it's got this beautiful pattern around the neck and at the back there is sort of a little opening if i can try and show you <laughs> he's trying to grab the camera um just at the back here now, there is an opening so that you've got plenty of room for his head to go through without it being too tight which i think is really lovely and it's um yes yeah, it's just a little bit big but i think it looks just as nice even though it's a little bit big and it'll last longer so thank you very much jensen for showing us your little jumper and he's got it on with some trousers that i've made that don't really go with it but they're the Oh, the dan no they're not the dandelion dungarees what are they called jensen can't remember i'll put the link in the description box down below anyway oh the tangerine trousers that's it i've remembered now um so thank you very much jensen and for daddy for 
looking after him here while I've been chatting away. That's okay. <laughs> Are you going to eat it? Does it taste nice? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jensen. Bye. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye.